Okay, now we're going to shift gears and, uh, and talk about uh, neurobiology of depression, talk a little bit more about this. Uh, we all know there are a multitude of events that can ignite depression, especially in people that are genetically predisposed, uh, and, and there truly are some uh, purely biological uh, endogenous depressions as well. But let's take a look at an animal model for depression first. And I mentioned this a little bit uh, a week or two ago. And where you really notice this is, is, are in monkeys and apes. And they, they have these really incredible uh, in, intricate dominance hierarchies and, and they, they form attachments and uh, little you know brother and sister monkeys get real attached to one another and that kind of stuff. And so if you're observing this in the wild, uh, this is not an experiment. Uh, but just an observation over a period of time. If uh, a little baby monkey uh, is separated from his mom, then he'll go into what you see on the screen and protest. And this basically is just separation anxiety. And these monkeys go nuts. They, they start bouncing around and rattling the branches on the tree, you know, and the leaves and, and calling out and making a lot of commotion. And of course that makes sense because it's, it, Mom has just wandered away and they kind of got separated. She can hear her baby and they get reunited. Okay, So it works. And that, in that sense, it serves survival and adaptation. However, if uh, the separation goes on uh, somewhere between 12 and 24 hours, the likelihood is mom is dead. Okay, And then you see this massive change in behavior. And they get into, it's called conservation or conservation withdrawal. They're conserving energy, and they're behaviorally they're withdrawing. Uh, they they pull away. They don't interact with other monkeys in the troop. Uh, they develop really significant psychomotor retardation. Uh, they look almost catatonic, and and they just sit there. And, um, and and they during this time, it typically lasts about two or three days. Uh, they may not eat uh, anything. They do. They eat just a little bit. Uh, they'll drink some water, but they have suppression of appetite, and uh, and they, but most of them, after two or three days, they come out of it. And monkeys and apes are are great most of the time in terms of adopting orphans, and they'll go find a, a you know mother, and and then things will get back on on track. Uh, but uh, there are about 20 percent of monkeys and apes that will have a, an exaggerated pathological conservation withdrawal response. And they, they'll they get so markedly shut down, uh, sometimes they starve to death. Uh, the loss of appetite kills them. Uh, most of the time that's not the case. They partially come out of this and they start eating, but they maintain social isolation. And and, uh, and this can go on for a really long time. And uh, this you know it's tempting oftentimes to look at animal studies and say, oh, well, that makes something similar to what happens with human beings. Well, maybe, okay? Uh, normal grief reactions, uh, certainly people, their appetite and their sleep is not good. And that's another thing, their sleep is impaired as well. Uh, but in, in any event, this is uh, an animal model that's been looked at uh, a lot, looking at loss. The other major animal model, of course, uh, has to do with learned helplessness that we've talked about before. 